Mafia 3. It's a game that got a ton of hate at launch, and for good reason. It was basically a steaming pile of garbage. Seriously, this game was so broken, so full of bugs, it was basically unplayable for around 80% of the player base. And for those who did get to play the game, they didn't exactly love it. The game didn't get great reviews, partially because it was so buggy and broken, and partially because reviewers thought that it leaned way too heavily into repetitious content instead of things that made the original Mafia games so unique and incredible, specifically the overwhelming focus on the story and narrative not necessarily trying to make it into a GTA spinoff. Now, I was one of these people. I didn't get to play Mafia 3 at launch, and I regularly would try to play Mafia 3 every month or so for the last few years because I still couldn't play it. That's right, like, even up until just a couple of months ago, every time I tried to boot up Mafia 3, it would crash during the opening sequence when you're loading money into the back of a truck. I literally couldn't play the game, even if I wanted to. But... Like a month and a half ago, I decided to try it one more time and it didn't work. But I tried again a couple of weeks later and it did. The point is I was able to play it. So I started going through it and we played it a bunch over on the Twitch stream. By the way, you should follow me over there. I'm probably live at the very moment I'm filming this video. So pop over, say hi, links in the link tree in the description box underneath the like button. And I gotta be honest, I, I really, think that this game got a bad rap and I'm going to show you why. But to do that, we got to actually play the game and try it. We're going to give the game a fair chance and see if it deserved all the hate that it got. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so we're going to be playing on Steam using the PC version of the game. The console version is still a little finicky and I've had some problems with it. Again, even now, like what, six years after the game's launch, but the PC version is functioning and that's what we're gonna try today. So for those of you not aware, the game is set in 1968 in New Bordeaux. It's basically New Orleans, but in a fictionalized universe, yet it's still in Louisiana. So it's just like the original Mafia games where it's like, it's real and it's set in a real place, but it it's not at the same time. It basically just gives them a reason to mess with some of the layout of the city, with some of the lore and the people that are involved in the, the city and government and everything, while still basically setting it in a real place. So one thing I do have to warn you about this game is that it's set in 1968 Louisiana. Like this is at the height of some, some craziness, shall we say? I'm trying to be ad friendly. Um, surrounding segregation, surrounding uh, Jim Crow, um, like it was a rough time. So as a result of the historical setting, they tried to be very real and grounded with it, respectful of the actual history of the area and what people of color went through during that time in that place. So there are segregated businesses in the game. If you, as Lincoln Clay, walk into a business that has a sign on it that says whites only, you will get kicked out of that business. Like, it's pretty hardcore. You will also have police stopping you in white neighborhoods for walking around after dark. You'll have people using let's say racial terms that perhaps Paula Dean knows about, but that are not acceptable in uh, open conversation. So it, it goes hard. So if you're sensitive to that type of thing, as I think you probably should be, but more specifically, if you just don't want to hear that or engage with it, even in the, the like context of a, a narrative set in a historical setting, just be aware that this game does show you that stuff in full force. They don't sugarcoat it and they let you know and see what it was like to live in this area as somebody like Lincoln Clay. And it, it wasn't particularly great. Now let's take a moment and break down exactly how this game works. Let's park gently while we do this. So the first thing to understand about Mafia is that it is primarily a narrative experience. As a, a franchise, Mafia 1, Mafia 2, are narrative games. That's what they do really well, and that's what they focus on. And in the past, 
that's been pretty much all they focus on. They have open worlds. For example, Mafia 1 Definitive Edition, you might have played that when uh, they released that remake recently, or Mafia 2 from back in the day. Those games had open worlds that were pretty well put together, but they didn't really try to make those open worlds living and breathing, filled with all sorts of side activities that you could complete just for the fun of it. The world was basically just an arena that you would be driven through as you traversed the story. And that's about it. If you ever took time to just drive around the city, you would probably notice pretty quickly that the world was empty, bland, boring. There wasn't much there. Now in Mafia 3, they tried to go the opposite route and put a lot more effort into the open world. So they spent a ton of time designing it so that it is heavily let's say, inspired by New Orleans. Even the layout of the city looks very, very similar to New Orleans. I actually just went there this past summer, so uh, I'm, I'm all too familiar with this, uh, this place, at least insofar as a tourist can be. And I gotta say, they did a pretty bang-up job with the financial districts, with the French Quarter, with the plantation areas along the river. Like, they, they did a pretty good job of recreating it. I don't know exactly what it was like in 1968, but apparently it wasn't too different from what it is today because today it, it does look and feel a lot like this. But what they wanted to do was encourage players to explore and traverse this open world because they put so much effort into building it. So what they did is they created these stops. You'll see them on the mini map right there. We're going to go in and deal with it. What these are are telephone boxes, juncture boxes that you have to hack into, which unlocks activities in the open world that you have to complete in order to progress through the story. While I run there, I, I'm just gonna go past this building. You'll notice this as you explore the world of New Bordeaux. There's a ton of buildings where just casual jazz bands are playing and practicing, and you can hear them if you stand outside. Kind of fun. And here we are at the juncture box. So what we do is we break into these with a little mini game, kind of like a basic lock picking thing. The closer you get to that first one means the bigger the range is to hit it on the, the rebound on the second one. You open up the box, you use parts that you've collected out in the world, electronic parts. You see, I just used three and that allows us to wiretap that node. And what that does is it opens up points of interest in this particular district. And after the opening eight to 10 hours of the game, all you will be doing is traveling around these districts, clearing out these special activities after you've opened up these junction boxes so that you can get new activities. And then you'll unlock the district boss, you'll kill them, and then move on to the next district. And that goes on for about 15 hours of gameplay repeatedly without much story content in the middle. Now, as you clear different districts, you'll also unlock all sorts of different abilities and perks from your associates, which you'll have three of. I won't name them because I guess one of them is potentially a spoiler, but you get three different ones. Some of them can allow you to stash your dough in your uh, safe back at your base, which means that if you die, it can't be taken. It's basically in a secured account, which is nice. The operator, which allows you to cut phone lines. So people who notice in the area you committing a crime or something they can't call the cops on you for a set period of time which is nice this one which allows you to pay 1500 bucks to call off the cops for 30 seconds cool ability and the hit squad which costs 3000 but brings in a squad of helpers to give you assistance in a given encounter and then we have the ability to call in an arms dealer where we can buy weapons and refill our ammunition in addition to also calling in vehicle delivery, which is what I've just done, where we can call in vehicles that we've collected previously or unlocked through various side missions or story missions. Altogether, it's not that bad, actually. As you can see, we have the standard... Okay, I don't want to... You did that to yourself. See, there's a witness calling the cops. I can go up here, use the marker. Sorry, to reach out. I certainly appreciate some help with the phone. Yeah, she gave me a heads up. Whatever you need, consider it done. Here, have one. I just appreciate the chance to help. Boom. And then they cut the, the phone line, so for two minutes, nobody can call the cops in this area, meaning I can just get away with what I just did, which was accidentally run over a woman who dove in front of my car. We also have this 
ability, which I'm going to be real, I can't see it as anything other than Franklin's driving ability from Grand Theft Auto V. It basically just lets you slow down and make quick turns without skidding off the road. I mean, what, what else am I supposed to make of this? It, it is Franklin's ability, like, let's be honest. The other thing you'll notice about that ability is that it makes the vibrance increase drastically. That's because the entire game has this filter put over it, which allegedly was put in place to make it look much more 60s and vintage. So they muted all of the colors. I really hate it. I think it looks so bad. Like, I pop this ability, look at the colors pop. The world is so much more vibrant and vivid and interesting. I love that world way more than this bland dark one that we get in the fi like finished version of the game. It just it looks bad. I don't like it. I mean, it's another example, right, of art style versus like narrative inspiration for the art style. And that just because you can make a change or an artistic choice doesn't mean that it's actually going to improve the quality of the experience. For something like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, we can point to that as an artistic choice for that art style, where it actually enabled the developers over at Nintendo to go bigger and badder and bolder with their design because they could save on rendering basically requirements and, and expenses by limiting the texture quality, the color quality, all of those things because they kept it within that very limited art style. In this case, Limiting and muting the colors I don't think serves any purpose whatsoever for the game other than just looking worse than if they turned it off, which isn't a good thing. We can also break billboards. I stand corrected. I should say we can break billboards if we happen to drive through the billboard section itself, then they break apart. I just assumed I could drive into the base and it would break apart. Apparently that's not the case. Can I help you? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can't break billboards like that. But if you go off a ramp and drive into it, then you can. And so here I can call in another car. Let's call in an exotic one. Sure Let's do this. Right See away. like this, this ramp. We can break this billboard. Let's do that. Let's do it! See, I wasn't lying. You can break them, okay? You just gotta go off a ramp. See, it, it works. It does work. Also, by God, the music in this game is tremendous. Like, they spent a freaking fortune licensing all this music. They have Elvis Presley. They have The Platters. They have pretty much every big name band of this time period in this game, it's tremendous. I think they've removed most of the Elvis music actually since launch, because I think after like five years, they lost the licensing to it. So that's a bit of a bummer, but they still have some amazing music in this. And it it scratches the same itch that a lot of Grand Theft Auto games scratch, where driving around and just listening to the music feels like a gameplay system in and of itself, and like something that's worth doing just to enjoy it. It's really that good. So the struggle that games like Mafia 3 have always had is that players and critics alike will always compare it to the best open world exploration games that have ever been released, specifically the likes of like Grand Theft Auto. And as a result of that, if you give players similar abilities to what they had in Grand Theft Auto, players and reviewers will just start to question whether or not you can keep up with that game, which is at this point, nine almost going on 10 years old and the problem with mafia 3 is that it's just not able to do all of that stuff that gta 5 did so freakishly well back in the day granted this game released about three years after grand theft auto 5 did but even so people are going to hold it to that standard and it just doesn't hold up let's drive on some buildings a little sports camera action Love it. Drive off that ramp. See, like we're we're having fun. Oh, I broke the donut. See, oh, okay, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. I almost killed myself doing it, but we had a good time. 
And you've probably noticed as we've driven around the map in these first few minutes that they put a lot of effort into recreating a lot of these iconic buildings from the area. They recreated interiors. They've got all sorts of stuff built out that looks really, really good. The difference is that it's, it's all still kind of just hollow. The NPCs aren't particularly smart. There's not a lot of world activities to partake in. Sure, we can drive around, we can do all sorts of stuff, uh, to entertain ourselves in that capacity, but eventually it, it just kind of gets old. I mean, I love driving through fruit crates and stuff, but eventually it gets repetitive. Now, one thing Mafia 3 does really, really well is it accurately portrays, as I mentioned before, the time period that this game is set within. And that means it can be hard to play at times, especially because you will run into, during the course of the story, some very, very racist, vulgar, and let's say problematic people that will be unsettling for most people. I think it's all done in a reasonably historical way, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't ever feel as though the writers are just saying things for the sake of saying things or that they're trying to engage in shock value for the sake of shock value. It, it all feels grounded within the characters you're dealing with. For example, in this area of the bayou in Sinclair Parish, we're dealing with a very corrupt police chief that, let's just say, has some antiquated views and is one of the most bigoted people in the entire game. And as a result, you have to be careful in this area because you are black. If you are caught in this area after dark, Police will shoot on sight. If you go into pretty much any store, you will be ushered out and they will try to arrest you. I mean, it, it's pretty tough to deal with. But what's crazier is that this is actually like pretty historically accurate, which is why I think it's important for players to give the game a shot, even if this sounds, um, let's say, difficult to to deal with or difficult to play because it's important to understand that this is real and this stuff actually did happen. Now, one element where the game starts to struggle is in its gameplay core loop, like what you're going to be doing, because what we do across the entire map in all of these districts, no matter what we're doing for which district boss or which uh, uh, faction that we're working with, no matter what, we are going into areas like this that are kitted out with a bunch of enemies that have a bunch of guns and uh, just want to shoot you on sight. And you can use your, your loadouts, whether you want to use an assault rifle, a sniper rifle, a silenced pistol, as I like to use, or one of your throwables, as you see in the bottom. Now, they introduced some stealth mechanics because Lincoln Clay here is actually a Vietnam veteran. So he has some pretty potent combat abilities, as you'll see there. And they actually introduced a system for specialized, gruesome takedowns where he does particularly aggressive things with a knife. It's a good touch because he is a Vietnam veteran. I'm sure he did much worse stuff over there, but still like, ooh, some of these finishers are, are hardcore. Now. One of the things somebody pointed out on Twitch that I cannot unsee, and you will not be able to unsee it either once I point this out, is that even now, about six years after the game's launch, they never fixed something as obvious as the placement of a silencer on the pistol. Look at the pistol in his hand. You see that dead space, that gap in between it? The silencer is backwards. <laughs> like, that's the screw on the bottom. He's supposed to screw it into the barrel and lock it in place. They didn't even fix that. That tells you how much post-game support this thing got. Um, it, it really was abandoned, which is unfortunate. It just seems like they put it out. It didn't sell well. But yeah, I mean, it, it is just really too bad that the game did not get much love from the developers after it was released. I mean, they pretty much put it out and then just left it like it was. There were a few patches that came here and there um, specifically to make the game run DLC that they launched after the fact. But like I said at the top, 
a lot of the console versions are still broken. Like they, they just don't work. Mafia 3 is available on Xbox Series X, for example, through backwards compatibility. It runs the Xbox One version of the game. And it just, it doesn't run very well at all. So it's just a real bummer that they didn't get the support they need. And yeah, this is a really clear example. You can see the huge gap between the gun and the silencer. It's just, it's flipped the wrong way and they didn't screw it in properly. It's, it, you can't make this stuff up. It's, it's amazing. This game has been out six years and they didn't fix even that. So yeah, this is what you're going to be doing for like 20 hours of gameplay and It'll probably get a little old, it'll get a little dry. If you really enjoy the setting and, and exploring 1960s Louisiana, then it'll probably be worth it and you'll be able to put up with the repetition. But if you don't have a high tolerance for that repetition, it's gonna drive you crazy and you probably are gonna wanna stop, which is what most players seem to have felt. Like seriously, this, this is all we're gonna be doing. We just walk, aim, pop, aim, pop. Normally we would go in and call off the uh, police dispatch, but in this particular area of the map, you can't do that because this cop is completely independent from the core group over here, so you can't actually use that ability. It's a good touch, don't get me wrong. Look at that stride, she's sprinting away, oh my god. <laughs> I really think this is an example of a game that could have benefited from uh, an attitude of less is more basically like because they wanted to turn this into a mini grand theft auto they failed to address the issue of like whether or not things should have been trimmed and cut because they just wanted more content so if they had just left the game where it is like at the end of act one and then they cut act two and just go straight to act three i think it would have worked really really well and i think the game would have been received a lot better but when you put something in your game that's not good, it's perceived as worse than if you just didn't have that bad thing at all. And that's where this game really suffered because they put that stuff in here, even when it shouldn't have been, just because they thought more was going to be better. And boom, just like that, we've escaped the junkyard. And that is that mission. That's the end of it. Done. And you're going to do that over and over and over and over again for like 15, 20 hours. At least we can enjoy the music while we drive off. Funny thing, when you uh, use the slow mobility, it actually slows down the music too, so everybody sounds really weird. <laughs> I love that. Okay, then we'll go in here, talk to our associate. Right over here, he's a lawyer. What? Oh, it's a fan. It's a fan. I was like, what is on her? It's a fan. Okay. It's hot in Louisiana. Loading. Loading. 2,000 years later. Okay, this is taking like a really uncomfortably long time to load, like aggressively long. We've been here for probably a minute and it's still... It's still going. Okay, this is ridiculous. It's been like it's been like five minutes. I don't I don't know what's happening. Can I back out? No. Okay. Well, you see, you can't script this stuff. Uh, I guess I guess the game does still have its problems. You know, I I can't even uh, I can't even back out of the game without Alt F fouring. So let's huddle up in the back and see if this game loads back in by the time we're done talking. <laughs> okay. Well sort of a successful experiment i suppose it's still loading there's the little loading symbol so it's still trying it's hardest not hard enough apparently so listen i'm kind of conflicted i like mafia as a franchise i like mafia 3 as a game in concept though the execution certainly leaves a lot to be desired i really think they just tried to do too much with this game if they had just trimmed a lot more fat off of the steak. I think the steak would have been a lot better than if they just left all the steak on and claimed that it was a gamble and that you were getting good bang for your buck. Like in this case, it's not really about how much you get for your $60 for a game. It's about the quality 
of what you're actually going to spend your time doing. And I think the evidence bears out that players would much rather play a phenomenal 10 hour game or a really good one than they would play a great 10 hours and then a terrible 10 hours after that, followed by a few more hours of really good stuff. They'd much rather a lean, mean experience than something that just feels inflated and bloated. <laughs> Still loading. Almost without a doubt, if they had cut out the second act of the game and just avoided the district system where you run around doing the same thing 1,500 times, I think players would have had a much better time with the game and would have been much more forgiving of the bloated experience that they got. Because the opening sequence is really good. The opening 10 hours even are really good. Very narrative, very linear, very story heavy. It's just very, very good. I really liked it. And the last portion of the game throws in some narrative curveballs that will blow your balls clear off. Like, really, really good. But the unfortunate reality is that most players are just never going to play Mafia 3. Even now, you watching this video, if you've never played the game, you probably are looking at this and aren't exactly sold. Still loading. <laughs> and here's the deal. In the modern games marketplace, there are so many options to choose from. You've got everything from free-to-play games like Call of Duty Warzone to Apex Legends mixed in with premium experiences that you have to pay for up front but can offer a ton of gameplay like Elden Ring. They all are vying for your attention and your dollar. And in order to keep up and in order to compete with those premium titles, you got to be premium yourself or come in at a lower cost or have such a specific niche appeal that people just don't care and are willing to overlook any flaws or lack of, let's say, value that they might get. And in this case, I just think Mafia 3 missed the boat on almost every single step of the journey like they missed it when it came to the quality of the title itself they didn't actually deliver a game that was playable which is like 101 most players couldn't actually get through the game at launch it was so broken i couldn't even launch it and get through the tutorial section for like six years and that's a problem i guess it was october of 2016 so more like five and a half years but you get my point but then, even if players were able to get through the game, they would launch into it, enjoy the first few hours, and then realize that it was going to be a repetitious monstrosity for about 15 to 20 hours until they got to the end game, which is what everybody was actually interested in seeing. Not the middle game, the end game. And then once the game launched and all of the numerous problems were clear for everybody to see, the developers weren't actually given the ability to fix it by the publisher. Instead, they were pushed into trying to pump out some easy DLC and then just move on to the next project. In this case, they actually were downsized pretty heavily. The studio had massive layoffs. It was, I mean, they were, they were out for blood, the managers at least. And as for what exactly went wrong, I'm not too sure. I'm not familiar with the development of the game, but it seems as though it was a mixture of managerial misconduct and oversight, uh, poor planning and production management. Um, I, I don't think most of this lands on the game developers except for the reliance on the mid-game grind for literally no reason. Like, at least in Shadow of War, a game which had a ton of grind, there was like a justification for it. They were trying to get you to buy loot boxes, a terrible justification, but there was a reason they did it. In this game, they just have you grind for like 20 hours doing the same thing over and over and over again. Cause like they weren't trying to sell you anything. They didn't have like XP boosters as far as I'm aware. It's just like they thought that the game was more fun than it is. It's weird. But there's a silver lining to all of this. And that is that Mafia seems to be getting sort of a second wind and after the overwhelming success of Mafia Definitive Edition, a game which I absolutely love. I, like, I can't even begin to describe how much I love that game. But yeah, after the overwhelming success of Mafia Definitive Edition, they actually announced that they are working on the fourth game in the franchise, 
I guess the fifth release, if you count definitive edition as a st like set alone standardized release, but yeah, it doesn't matter, I guess, but they're making another game. And apparently this one's going to be sort of a return to form. Uh, they're returning to their roots. It's apparently going to be set in Sicily or some other Italian city. And it's going to be focused on the mob as the first two games were. They're not going to try to fluff it up or get too creative with it, at least in terms of setting. They're just doubling down on what made those original Mafia games great. And that was that they told a straight up Godfather level story but allowed you to experience it in the format of a video game. And that's an experience I want to have again. And it looks like we're going to get it. Knock on wood, at least, right? Like, hopefully they don't screw it up again like they did last time. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. All told, I think Mafia 3 is probably worth giving a shot if you get it for like five bucks on sale or if you have it in your inventory on like PlayStation Plus. I know it was a, a PlayStation free game of the month a while back so you might have it in your inventory um and and like load out of games what, what is the word collection maybe i don't know if you got the game laying around i'd give it a shot if you can play it you might stumble into something that you enjoy and hey if you only enjoy the first 10 hours then you get to that grind and you just stop having fun just stop playing it if you already own the game you have nothing to lose other than your time which is why you should stop when you're not having fun anymore but if you're having a good time give it a shot but honestly, I, I probably wouldn't pay more than like 10, 15 bucks max for this thing. Even now it has technical issues, which make it difficult to play, uh, though it is, I guess, playable. We played it for an extended period today. It's just still loading. <laughs> but you know what? I'll leave it there. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button so I know how to do more of these and subscribe to get notified of new content that's on the way. Also, head over to the Twitch stream. Say hi. We're probably live at the very moment that this video goes up. I'd love to see you. But that's it for me. I love you all more than you could possibly know. And I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.